Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and today we're going to talk about the backstab. Alright, I don't know about that opening, but we'll see. Anyways, so I, I, I put a post up uh, on my community here, and I asked uh, if a thief could use their, you know, well, I stated it the way it's written in BX, if they could basically use a magic missile to get the double damage, you know, in, in old school games they get. And... I got a lot of comments, and most of them said no, and explained why, and, and the philosophy of it. But I noticed when I looked at the actual um, poll itself, yeah, I'm showing my screen here. That's right, yeah, there we go. Um, that actually, 43% of the people that answered the poll actually said that, that they would allow it. And uh, the next highest is 37%, which says, no, you can just use a dagger. Looks like they're doing some construction outside, so if you hear that, I apologize. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was very interesting. But then I also had this exchange with Michael, um, which I thought was interesting as well. Um, and he says that uh, uh, I would rule that since magic missile always hit, they are not aimed and therefore would not be able to do a backstab damage. I view a backstab as the, ability th as the thief's ability to exploit a weak spot and causes massive damage. That's really interesting, right? And I said, I think that's what a lot of people think. And, and, and I'm wondering where that comes from. It's really what comes to my head. Because my reply back when he said, what do you think? Is I said, uh, I think that simply that thieves are cowards and they look for an opening and they they're basically go for a cheap shot. To me, a sneak attack is not this luxurious, beautiful attack that comes in exactly through the point of the armor. It's like throwing mud in somebody's eye or kicking them in the you know groin area or whatever. It's, it's a sneak attack. It is a thief fighting dirty. And that's what I think, and it was that's how I look at it. So then, like, well, what does D and D think about this? And I thought, you know, I have lots of additions here, um, and I thought, you know, I'll go through just we'll do like a quick history of the backstab and see if we can interpret it differently, or you know, see how we can interpret it. So let me close these. So I'm not trip over myself here. And let's start with the with the granddaddy of them all, chainmail. Is there something like this in chainmail? I mean, chainmail is a war game, right? Why would that make any sense? But I thought, well. Let me take a look because there's some other factors that go into this. And in fact, Chainmail has flank attack and rear attack. And the flank attack, uh, they attack basically as the next, because in Chainmail, without getting too far into it, you attack based on your troop type. So if you have like a sword, you attack as one type, but a pole arm, you attack as a, a, a higher type. Well, if they're attacking from the flank or the rear, we'll see below, they attack as the next higher type. So they basically get a bonus when they attack. More dice to roll, which means potentially more kills. So in a sense, there was like a rear attack. It wasn't a sneak attack or a, um, you know, surprise attack. It was just if you're attacking somebody from the rear, you have basically an advantage. So Chainmail, you know, had that. So the next thing in the line, and this is the introduction of the thief, right? The thief first appeared, I believe it may have been in the strategic review or some other... Uh, zine before, but the first official place it appears is in Greyhawk in the original Dungeons and Dragons, which is right here. Um, and if we look at the Thieves' ability, uh, by the way, this is the, the reading of the scroll thing. Um, okay, so it says, by striking silently from behind, so silently from behind, that's interesting, right? The Thief gains two advantages. First, he increases the chance to hit by 20%. Secondly, he doubles the damage, and then it talks about how it goes up as they go up each level. So here we've got a thief striking silently from behind. It doesn't say specifically uh, what they have to do to do that, it's just because this is OD and D, right? So figure it out. Um, they get a bonus to hit, and they do a massive amounts of damage. It doesn't say anything about being precise. It doesn't say anything about being skilled warriors. It says if they're striking silently from somewhere. In other words, it's a cheap shot, right? So that's OD and D. The next thing that would have come out is Holmes, which does not exist as a PDF. But I do have this reprint of it. Unfortunately, it's kind of beat up. And if we look at Holmes, I probably should have flipped to this page to start. It's not even described really in Holmes, except for right here. I will read it to you, but it, it's... Oh, I make myself big. Oop. Okay. Right here, under the chart for Thieves' Skills, it says... Note, when a thief of any level strikes a blow from behind, a bonus of plus four to hit is given, and double damage is scored. When a thief of any level strikes a blow from behind, a bonus of plus four is given and double damage is scored. This, this actually takes out the silently, the sneaky part. It just says a thief striking a blow from behind. Again, a cheap shot. Now, if you're in a one-on-one -on -one fight with somebody, clearly you can't 
just strike a blow from behind. You couldn't use it then. But if your fighter is is in combat with somebody and you get around the back, you're striking them from behind, right? You're making a cheap shot. Shouldn't you get that then? And I'm waiting for the comments already. Because some comments will also talk about how people try to exploit backstab. And maybe that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so now we're now we're up to AD and D, right? So um, we'll get to, to BX in a second, but... Okay, so this is AD and D, right? This is the granddaddy, right? What does Gygax say about the backstab? Because he actually calls it the backstab at this point. It's not, been, it's not been called backstab to this point. Backstabbing is striking a, a, is the striking of a blow from behind, be it with a club, dagger, or sword. Okay, so here he's, well, if you read it very literally, he's specifically saying he's striking a blow from behind with those three weapons, or you could just look at it as be it with, meaning it could be anything, right? It could be anything, but he's given some examples. You could read that either way. I think a lot of people read it as you could only do it with that, including myself. When we played as kids, you could only backstab. That's how we played it, club, dagger, or sword. If you used a different weapon, you could not backstab. So, back, uh, club, dagger, or sword, striking a blow from behind. Hmm, what I don't see here is anything about sneaking or silently or unnoticed. But wait, right here, this part describes the damage. Down here, though, it says, note that striking by surprise from behind also increases the hit probability by 20%, plus four on the two hit. Also, meaning that striking a blow from behind is all you need to do in first edition AD&D to achieve a backstab. You don't need to do it by surprise. You need to just be behind him. So if your fighter is fighting with the ogre and it's occupied and you can get behind it, you know, uh, you can get a backstab based on this. You don't have to roll, move silently necessarily. You don't have to do anything. Because if the ogre can't turn around because it's facing the fighter, I mean, okay, so the DM says, well, you go behind it, it turns around. Okay, fine, then the fighter can attack it from behind. I mean, it won't get the double damage, but now it's exposed, it's back to the fighter, who will get a plus two, because when you attack from behind, you get a plus two. So, yeah, I mean, essentially, this is surrounding the enemy and fighting dirty. That's really how I read this. Um, and actually, if I run AD&D &D again, this is how I'm going to run it. Anytime a thief can get behind the person, and they can't turn around to face them because they're otherwise occupied, they will get that backstab damage. So that's AD&D. &D. You know, that's Gygax. Okay, so now we're going to move to my favorite, which is BX. And this is what I quoted in my um, in my post, right? When striking unnoticed, so they brought that back, from behind, a thief gains a plus four bonus two hit rolls and inflicts twice the normal amount of damage. Again, when striking unnoticed from behind, a thief gains... It doesn't say anything about weapons. It doesn't say that they can't uh, use anything to strike. It just says striking. You could read striking as making an attack, but you could also read striking as anything. And one thing I said was, it could be the thief's up on a ledge and they roll a boulder on top of somebody because they're getting them unnoticed. The The spirit of this to me is that you're basically surprising them and, 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 uh, and getting them when they're not ready. It's not necessarily a, a, a legit surprise, like as in... You had to roll the surprise roll, but they didn't think you were there. Your fighter is there, luring the ogre or the minotaur forward, you know, with his sword. The thief climbs up on the ledge. There's some rocks up there. When the minotaur moves forward, the thief rolls the boulder over uh, onto the minotaur's head. Double damage. Why not? The, it, he's unnoticed. The minotaur doesn't know he's up there. It's from behind. You could interpret this plus four to hit either way. I don't know if I'd make him make a plus four. I don't know if I'd make a make a hit roll with the rolling of the boulder. I might do some kind of, uh, you know, saving throw for the Mantar is probably what I would do, and then use the, the bonus as a penalty. Okay, so that's BX. Uh, moving forward in time, I didn't do back because I don't have it, but I assume it's the same. Um, I am going to do a couple more modern ones in a second, but let me just do second edition, because I think second edition is really interesting. Um, second edition, by the way, I mean, people complain about first edition being hard to read. Second edition, to me, is one of the worst laid out of all the editions. Um, okay. Here we go. Backstab. Look, look at all this stuff about the backstab. It's so long. Okay. Backstab. Oh, I can't do that. Thieves are weak in toe-to-toe -to -toe hacking. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, matches. But they are masters of the knife in the back. When attacking somebody by surprise and from behind... By surprise. Now, they don't capitalize or italicize the word surprise, so they might not mean actually surprise, but it could, you could rule it as that if you roll a surprise check. 
from behind. A thief can improve his chance of success by plus four modifier. Uh, what's funny too is it gives plus four modifier for rear attack and negate the target shield and dexterity bonuses. Well, if somebody is surprised they are, from behind, they you always get that. So that's no bonus to the thief. That's to everybody. The plus they get two more basically, and increase the amount of damage that the blow causes. To use his ability, the thief must be behind his victim, and the victim must be unaware <laughs> that the thief intends to attack him. If he sees the end, see, if the enemy sees the thief, hears an approach from blind side, or is warned by another, is not caught unaware, and the backstab is handled like a normal attack. Man, there must have been so many rules lawyers uh, between first and second edition that they were like, all right, we're going to write this out really specifically. If the ogre takes three steps forward and the thief does, it's like, these are the kind of rules I don't like that are so thorough. But anyways, it also talks about how like you can't do it to a giant because you can't reach its back. I call BS on that. Let me tell you something. You come up with behind a giant, you cut its uh, uh, at least it can tendon, that's going to cause some damage. So if you play my second edition game, you can backstab a giant. Anyways, um... So here they're much more specific. They're calling it backstab. They don't, now they've gone away from saying you have to do it with a certain weapon, but they are saying that it must be by surprise. So you got the sneak thing again. Um, and, you know, it gives all these other rules about, you know, garbage. I'm not going to read all that. Okay, this is Daniel from the future. Um, I sat down to start to edit this and I just happened to have the second edition open and I kind of kept reading through this wall of text and there's more here and it does get a little more specific. So let me just read this part to you. Backstabbing does have limitations. First, the damage multiplier applies only to the first attack made by the thief, even if multiple attacks are possible. Once a blow is struck, the initial surprise effect is lost. Second, the thief cannot use it on every creature. This is the important part, I think. The victim must be generally humanoid. Part of the skill comes from knowing just where to strike. Part of the skill comes from knowing just where to to strike. This now might be the origin of the idea that it's a combat skill that the thief has, right? A thief could backstab an ogre, but he wouldn't be able to do the same with the beholder. Well, beholders have eyes open. Anyways, a victim must ha also have a definable back, which leaves out most slimes, jellies, oozes, and the like. And finally, uh, the thief made, this is the part about the giant that I did kind of see, Finally, the thief has to be able to reach a significant target area. To, to backstab a giant, the thief would need to be standing on a ledge. Again, I call BS on that. Backstabbing an ankle isn't going to be effective? Yeah. Hmm. Anyways, I call BS on that, but I will say that I think I may have found it, right? So, and in the video, I think I found what I was looking for. Right here in 2nd Edition Player's Handbook, it says uh, part of the skill comes from knowing just where to strike. This is the first time we've seen this. Uh, all the way is from the original edition, uh, the first time it appeared in Greyhawk, all the way is up to um, to to first edition through BX and, and everything up. And this is like the late 80s when this came out, I guess, 89, I think. So all the way from 74 to 89, it never said that the thief needed to have a certain skill. You know, no, no, the, the area to hit. It just kind of said they needed to, to, to be there. So there you go. That might be it. Now uh, back to the regularly scheduled program. But let me should, let me let's look at one thing here, which I think is really interesting. Actually, I'm going to skip that. I'll, I'll come back to the second. Let's look at fifth edition. So we're just going in order. This is now from the fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons SRD system reference document. Uh, this is online for free. Uh, if you guys don't know that, okay. So beginning at first level, you know how to strike subtly and exploit a foe's distraction. What distraction doesn't say anything about being skillful or knowing where to hit. They're distracted. Once per turn, you can deal an extra d6 damage to one creature you hit with an attack you have advantage on. Uh, so if you know, you know, it has to be finesse. It can be a ranged weapon. Um, so it's got to be like a lightweight weapon or, or a, a bow. Um, and there's another way to do it, too. If, if basically, if the uh, if you have other, like your fighter is fighting the, the enemy, you get it. You don't, have to be, you don't have to be behind them anymore. They just have to be doing something else, right? So they've kind of removed the behind thing, which I think is actually a good thing. And the reason why I say that is because I believe that the the behind statement makes people, oh, and also the fact that it's called backstab in AD&D, uh, makes people really picture this like sneaky, you must, it's really hard to do, like how do you get behind somebody? It's really, and I think it doesn't need to be that hard. I think that if you, uh, 
if you, I, I like being behind. I think being behind or them being distracted is important. Like, I wouldn't give a backstab to a thief in BX with a bow that's just shooting a regular ogre that's fighting a fighter. That would be over the top for an OSR game. But I do think that, that you could be a lot more liberal with it as far as um, when, it's, when it's applicable. But let me show you this. And this is one thing that I think is really interesting about language. This here is the, the incredibly beautiful um, old school essentials. So if you guys don't know about this, this is really, really nice. It's, it's essentially a, I didn't bring the book out. It's really, it's a restatement, I'll call it, a reorganization of the basic expert rules. However, it's not an exact copy. It has to be rewritten, right? What do we see here? Nowhere in BX that I could find, I looked in both basic and expert just to make sure, does it say backstab? But they did say when attacking an unaware opponent from behind, a thief receives plus four bonus hit and doubles the damage dealt. So again, unaware, doesn't say anything about, you know, sneaking or surprise or whatever. It just says they have to be unaware. But this, this word, right? I mean, you got to call it something, I guess. This word that was first used by Gygax, I guess, in, in AD&D, has really set this thing up to be, okay, no, this is very specifically, when I, if, I've, if you close your eyes and I say backstab, you have an image in your head. Where really, I, I think, or the intent of it, in, in my mind, or the way that I like to use it, is it's really just fighting, like, cheap, you know, cheap fighting, or however you want to call it. Uh, dirty fighting, you know, it's taking advantage of that thing. Like when you're watching people, uh, you know, you you see your 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 uh, your fighter is is wrestling with 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 this guy, and you kind of come up and just like kick the guy in the ribs so he goes off the fighter. Like that's just that's the the sneak attack or backstab or whatever for me. That's the 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 idea. It's it's that the thief is cowardly. The thief is going to take every advantage they can. And, and that's why they exploit and why they get the extra damage. It's not because they're skilled fighters. And I think part of this comes down, too, to this, like, the way that people think of the rogue in, in more modern games, right? The rogue has become essentially a fighter. Whereas in earlier D&D, the thief was not a fighter at all. In fact, 2nd edition even says they're, they're terrible fighters. They're really not meant to be that. They're sneaky. They're underhanded. They are, uh, in a lot of ways, I mean, in fact, 2nd edition, the bard was under the thief class, which I think... It might be, I don't know how that, um, or it was under the rogue class when they first started using it. Um, but I think that a thief fills that spot, right? When there's no bard in the game, like if you're playing basic and somebody wanted to play a bard type character, uh, a thief with high charisma would be a great bard, right? They're tricky. Uh, they, they're, they're not great fighters and they kind of play that role, right? They're not particularly tough, um, but they can be any well, any character can be charismatic, but it can be a good role for a thief in the party. Um, and I think when you go back to um, to the BX rule, where they just have to be unnoticed uh, from behind, I feel like that's probably a good middle ground. Using the AD and D rule, where they just have to be behind them, that might be too much, depending on your situ your your. Uh, your setup, but I will say that if you've never played AD and D, I mean, if you think BX is dead, I mean, AD and D is, is ruthless. It is the monsters are way tougher compared to the player characters than they are in in, in the OSR most OSR games, which are based on B and X. So yeah, I think I'd give it to them in, in, in AD and D. So what do you guys think? Am I completely off base? Now I still, you know, going back to the original question, I don't know that. I mean, I probably would allow the magic missile to work. I mean, why not if they ambushed them? Um, because, again, they only need to be unnoticed. And they only need to strike them. And doesn't a magic missile strike the target? You know, if you want to play a, the word game. Let's see. Let's go down to the spells. And let's see what magic missile actually says. Magic missile. Here we go. A magic missile is a glowing arrow created and shot by magic, which does 2 to 7 points of damage to any creature it strikes. Same language, right? Uh, magic missile says uh, any creature it strikes... And the, the BX thing says strikes. So, you know, can we use it? Maybe. I mean, why not, right? Why not give the, uh, the creative player character a creative player, I should say, a bit of an advantage sometime? I think sometimes we're so like, you know, you're trying to power game. You know, sometimes you got to give them a break. So 
Uh, let me know what you guys think. How do you see backstab? Is backstab just a dagger? Is backstab, no, they got to make a move silently and to hide in shadows roll, and they got to do this. Or is it simply the thief fighting dirty, and if they can get behind the, the, the person unnoticed, so they're not the focus of the attention, they could get some kind of bonus. Let me know in the comments below if you haven't already, guys. Go ahead, subscribe. Ring the bell, I guess, if you can. Oh, by the way, if you've been watching the um, actual plays on this channel, they have moved to Bandits Keep Actual Play. I will put a link in the description so we can get some, some of you guys over there. I noticed that the those videos we started streaming over there recently, and they're not getting as many views as they were when they were here. So I'm assuming some people that are here are, are not aware they're over there. So go ahead, jump over there. Um, and watch those. We have some fun campaigns going on. I just started an OD&D &D, uh, campaign this past Thursday. So uh, really fun. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.